Hello. So I thought I would do a little uh, summary of um, the last episode um, that goes as part of this two-part episode with our special guest, Rochelle Firth. So Rochelle has a really interesting story. She um, has had a phenomenal fitness journey uh, where she started at over 100 kilos um, and is now a two-time fitness competitor um, and has multiple um, top three placings um, in those in those competitions. Uh, and she's on a journey um, to compete in uh, figure once she builds her physique. Anyway, so in the first part, if you haven't caught it yet, in the first part um, of the podcast, um, and there was such juicy information that we decided to split it so that you didn't have to sit there for two hours listening to it. Um, but we essentially, you know, we share intimate details uh, from Rochelle's struggle um, at 100 kilos um, with her sort of poor fitness and nutrition habits, mindset, um, and uh, and influences from others to sustaining a healthy body weight and composition and then obviously competing. Um, we share the good and the bad about, um, you know, bodybuilding and the myths busted and the lessons learnt um, that uh, will now forever shape uh, who Rochelle is um, as a person and how she chooses to live a life. And we also talk about the importance of, um, you know, working with a coach and setting realistic goals. Uh, Rochelle is now also uh, working uh, in PT um, and in gym as well as um, her other job at the moment. So she's uh, actually helping others to change their lives, um, given that she understands where a lot of young women have been and particularly young mums in terms of getting back on track um, to the gym and building the right behaviours and attitudes toward fitness um, and their bodies. So some of the key insights that we had from part one is basically that your, you know, your family and the environment that you grew up really shapes um, the way that you tend to um, undertake your fitness uh, and nutrition habits and the mindset that you kind of uh, subconsciously or unconsciously adopt as you go into adulthood. Um, you know, the... Uh, that scales are a poor measure for how you look, feel, and perform. Uh, and then when you focus on those things, everything gets a lot better. Um, that dieting doesn't have to be hard or make you feel um, bad about yourself or feel oh, like a horrible experience when you're doing it. Um, and working on your relationship with food is really important and should definitely be addressed before you even start thinking about doing uh, something like bodybuilding or any kind of like athletic comp uh, competing. Um the uh we talked a little bit about the if it fits in the macros approach and the changes to that um and you know trying to cheat the system um to get a particular um, body weight and so on um and the surprising impact that um, bodybuilding had on rochelle's life um and the way it kind of spilled over um and some of the um i guess the the skills uh the resilience the confidence and the trust um, in herself that she built and also the establishing of boundaries which became essential if she was going to get everything done so in part two um, without giving away too much we're going to cover um, a little bit more on the same uh, sort of uh, themes um, and the first one is you know um, the importance of um, you know actually getting help earlier than when you think you should um you know trying to go it alone trying every fancy diet that's out there or you know using instagram to get a fancy workout without any kind of um structure or progression um isn't going to give you the results that you're seeking uh and then you know the importance of mastering foundational skills before you're stepping up your athletic pursuits um the importance of actually having a coach during off season and not just to help you with a prep. Uh, the post comp is is a whole different beast, um, and you don't really understand it until you go through it. So having the structure and support to focus on the right goals helps give you the bandwidth um, to focus on what really matters. We talked a little bit about that, uh, and uh, surprisingly, how difficult it is to actually get into bodybuilding if that is something that you want to do. Um, so it's really important to take time to understand what you need to know, what resources you'll need to have, uh, and then understand exactly what you're signing up for because it's not an easy sport and it is resource intensive. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy uh, the second part of this uh, podcast um, series, I guess it is. Um, and obviously, uh, you just check out the comments if you want to connect with either Rochelle or myself to learn more. 
All right, happy listening. Welcome to the AKA Fitness Connect Show. I'm your host, Amy King. Join us in this podcast series as we interview successful coaches from a wide array of health and fitness uh, and wellness disciplines, as well as pros and amateur athletes or just fitness enthusiasts of all shapes and sizes. Here, we'll share valuable content to enhance your mindset, life and nutrition, all to help you along your epic personal health and fitness journey. Um, this one was a bit easier because we both knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but it's but still not did, easy. <laughs> yeah, but you also did a period of counterbalance as well, right? So it was like, okay, I have deep bodybuilding for a period of time. So how do I, you know, and how do I release, um, you know, how do I, um, re- you know, basically counterbalance? So, yeah. so how do I make sure and nourish the other parts of my life? Because you've got to have something beyond bodybuilding once you finish it. Because that becomes your whole yeah. life. It'll consume yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that first prep was very much the path I was going down. It was like bodybuilding, bodybuilding, bodybuilding. Anyone talk to me, oh, it's something to do with what I'm doing for prep. And it's, and I, I got to the point in sort of this year um, after my first bump where I realised that, yeah, it's a very important part of my life for me, um, but not everyone wants to hear about what I'm eating or how many reps I did or this or that. The other. Sometimes they do. That's great. Like, cool. We'll talk about it all day. Um, but, you know, that is one part of me and there's also other parts to me. So uh, it's not the bodybuilder who happens to be Rochelle. It's, you know, Rochelle yeah. and she is a bodybuilder, but yeah. there's all these other aspects. And so um, I sort of shifted my focus to other aspects, things like my PT work, um, my relationship, spending time, like finding that time back. Um, and then looking at where I wanted to go um, and if I wanted to stay in bodybuilding, what I needed to do to sort of progress that for the next time. So, yeah, it was it's important to sit down and have those things because otherwise it's, yeah, it's a very tough time when you go from very structured. Well, for me, it's basically the to the minute of the day is structured um, to fit everything in. So I'm up at four. I'm not in bed till like 9.30, 10 o'clock and then I get up at four. Oh, four on a good day um, and do it all again, you know, and there's not space for 10 minutes because things need to be done. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to sort of have that counterbalance. But when you go from that to normal life again, um, yeah, you do need some something else to focus on. Otherwise yeah. it's a bit like, well, what's going on? There's <laughs> yeah. Who am there's I? What space. am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then so the other thing is as well, right, like you've obviously built some confidence, you've, you've shifted some paradigms, changed the mindset, but how would you find as well um, your self-awareness now? Yeah, uh, definitely changed. So I am a lot more conscious of how, I guess, how my actions are going to affect those around me um, and where I've always been, I've been quite an anxious person. Um, so I always used to be very conscious of how what I'd do would affect other people. Now I'm a lot more aware of where, I guess, where my responsibility ends. So I need to do this for me. And if you're not on board with it, that's okay. But this is my space and this is what I need to do. And whatever you think about it isn't actually going to affect it. Um, So for me, that was really important because I didn't have boundaries with anyone. So I'm a very yes man type person. um, And I've had to learn to sort of what I can take on and what I can't, which is still a skill I'm working on, but we're getting there. Um, But that was really, yeah, that's a really important one uh, for me in terms of that because I, yeah, I started to realise there's only so much you can do. And also you you can't be everything to everyone. Um, Sometimes... And to, to use an old cliche, you can't pour from an empty cup either. So you can't do everything for everyone when you've got nothing left for yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's bodybuilding forced me to take time out for myself because I had to. If I wanted to do this, I had to carve out that time and protect it and say, sorry, I don't care what's happening. Well, I might care, but I've got to care in an hour. I've got to train first. Like this is important to me and no one else can do it for me and no one else is going to do it for me. So it's important that I actually protect that space. And that was a really important thing for me to do because I didn't used to take time for myself or look after myself at all. I was always trying to look after everyone else. Yeah. So that was a really, really important thing for me to start learning. Yeah. And it's then- helped my relationships and has helped my um, work and things like that because it's 
that overflow effect, it flows into everything else. Um, and I think people respect it as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's something where it's like, okay, it's not that you're not willing to help, but it's, you know, I, I will, but on my time and on my terms as well, because you got to look out for yourself at some point. <laughs> no one yeah. else is going. <laughs> and you don't want to resent other people because you feel like you have yeah. to take that time. You're responsible for that. So when you own your shit, exactly. everything just falls into line. Mm-hmm. Um, my language there. And, yeah, um, no. But the other thing is as well, right, like you set an example and you had people who reached out to you because they saw your commitment and your achievement of just getting up on stage before, and they probably recognised your achievement before you did, right? So you had some people reach out to you um, and and uh, post-comp um, sort of telling you how proud they were and all that sort of stuff. Do you want to share any of that if that's not too personal for you? Yeah, no, that that was pretty cool. So um yeah, I mentioned my family earlier, but I had um, members of my family who uh, were probably big drivers in some of my childhood experiences with food and um, body image, uh, reach out and sort of lay it all out and say, look, I can't believe that you've gone from this to this. I'm really proud of what you've achieved. You've made me have a look at how I'm living my life. Um I was really excited because my sister's gotten into the gym all on her own accord. But like, I think um, having someone that can sort of go, oh, try this or maybe look at doing this and realizing that we're very similar um, body types, like the way we've raised and things like that. So it was really exciting to sort of see her because it took me so long to get to that point, seeing someone, you know, a generation earlier getting into that. I'm like, oh, this is awesome because it's not going to continue um, in, in my head anyway. It's sort of like, okay, cool, we're breaking that. Um, the next generation, like whether I have kids, whether she has kids, whatever, yeah. Um, yeah. they're not going to have those same like pop, like issues or worries about food or nutrition because they're coming from learning that from being, you know, this big, not from 30 and trying to learn it from there. Yeah, so, and great. not having those hang ups around things. So, that was really exciting for me as well. A um, couple of friends and workmates as well who've sort of gotten back into the gym, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that the big ones for me were definitely the family um, yeah. starting to realise like, oh, wow, like you've actually committed to this and that's actually a hard thing to do and you followed through with it and we're proud of you. That was really cool. Yeah. So it was yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's always nice. And then also how did that make you feel as well, realising that you could have a greater impact on others by doing more for yourself? Yeah, it surprised me because I don't think I realised the influence that I had. So, um again comes to that confidence thing I think as well but this idea that you're sort of like oh yeah I'm just doing my thing and everyone else does theirs but having that feedback and people sort of and people coming going, oh will you prep me and I was like no <laughs> but not yet <laughs> but um but having that feedback of you know oh we we notice what you're doing and we acknowledge it but we also think there's value in what you're doing is really it's really nice feedback <laughs> um but it's also exciting because I I was so lucky to be connected with someone like yourself and I want to be that person for other people so that they can realise, I mean, and I'm not saying everyone has to go compete or be a bodybuilder, but yeah. to realise to, to realize they can have a healthy relationship with food and like they can change the way that they train or the way that they see themselves. And really for me, it's re- the strength training side of things was really important. Um, yeah. I never really liked running or anything like that, so I thought I didn't like exercise. And for me, as soon as I started lifting weights, I found something that I could enjoy. And I think that's a really important thing, especially for women, because we're always sort of told jump on the treadmill, run for three hours, you know, count your calories. And it was really liberating for me to go, actually, I'm going to get bigger and I'm going to get stronger and I'm going to eat. And (laughs) I don't care what anyone else thinks. Um, And I want to see other women go through that as well. Um, Just the societal norms around that, I think, you know, however much you want to buy into it um, where it, there's a certain expectation on women and how they look and how they act and how they behave. Um, and it's not something I necessarily subscribe to. Yeah. I, I'm not a girly girl and there's nothing wrong with being a girly girl, but it's not for me. Yeah. Um, and I I just found it really liberating to have that sort of place where I could go and I can grunt and I can be sweaty and I can do what I need to do um, and get my results and, it's fun, but also it's not punishment. 
But whereas for me, going for a three hour run, like my brother's a runner, he loves it. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, going for a three hour run for me, it sounds like torture. But for him, probably lifting weights is probably torture. Yeah, so yeah, it's, you've got to find it's finding what you love. Exactly. Yeah. And then being able to sort of show other, especially women, um, but show them that, you know, you do have that power to change your body if you want to. If, and it's not about looking different. It's about feeling different um, and living your best life. As cliche as it sounds, like yeah. you know, we all want to live out like to our full potential and be the best person or version of ourselves. So I want to help other people do that as well. Yeah, awesome. And then so just, you know, and, and I think as well, because we can't obviously see it in, in the podcast at the moment, but, you know, when you first came to me, you were close to 80 kilos. You, you didn't um, have the shape that you have now. And what you probably competed at, what, uh, maybe 64 kilos or something like that around that? Yeah. Yep. So exactly. we almost lost, <laughs> yeah, almost lost 20 kilos over that time. And then even in your off season, yeah. you didn't hit back really above 70, did you? No, no, yeah. really. Yeah, so you sort of so that's that's significant in itself, right? So just doing the foundational stuff, we've shaped your body and what like let's just put it in context. So Michelle, you're quite a tall girl, so um, without talking yeah. about power weight too much, I mean realistically, yeah. what that's that's meant that you've you're what a six size six or a size eight up in the upper body and um yeah yeah maybe a size eight and about a ten to twelve on, underneath and yeah. you've got big hips yeah um but yeah absolutely so I've, yeah I've got a very like yeah, I've always had a slim upper body compared to my, my lower body. But, yeah, being tall, like I'm five foot ten, so or yeah. slightly over. So um, it's a healthy weight for me to be yeah. Um, rather yeah. than, yeah, rather than way too slim. Um, so there was points where I was trying to get down below 60 kilos, which probably, and not to be on stage, which was yeah. not something that's sustainable or a good idea to begin with. Yeah. Um, and then. And like we say, on the other end, I was up close to 100 kilos. So I've definitely been both ends of the scale. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you that the number on the scale doesn't mean much either no, uh, no. in terms no. of composition and things like that. Um, sometimes I've, I've looked better at heavier weights. Um, I've weighed less and looked, ter- looked terrible, um, so to speak, but just being skin and bone and not healthy at all. Yeah. Um, so a big thing for me was actually stepping away from the scale and like not tying that number to yeah. looking at my body value composition yeah and stuff like that yeah no the only reason i'm bringing that up is just for oh, no. as well is because a lot of people think that you're gonna get bulky when you do weights right yeah and, no. and <laughs> even in off season I wish. <laughs> yeah even in off season you maintain a, a lean physique like you you look fit but you don't yeah. look overly muscular um you know um well for now because eventually it's to get into figure <laughs> but, yeah. um but the whole point being is that you know it's you can spend time doing training you can eat a lot but you're not gonna you're not gonna get massive right like you're gonna yeah. have a nice shape to you where you look good in leggings and you can wear a crop top and your arms have got a nice shape to them right like it's <laughs> it's feeling confident all year round right it's not just about the you know the few minutes that you're on stage yeah, yeah absolutely definitely and, so what do you think as well are the benefits just from your experience? And this isn't about talking me up, just in general. Um, and and I think because I think we've touched on it as well, because you're now, um, you know, those foundational things that you've learned, which aren't unique to bodybuilding, you've been translating to your clients as well, right? Around, you know, the exercising consistently, but also being attention to your form, you know, being yeah. mindful, um, you know, paying attention to your body in terms of your stress levels and that and and getting them to kind of carve out that space in the gym and forget the you know the outside world to take note yeah. around how foods make them feel or to get away from processed food oh. and so on so yeah anything else that you've taken from a foundation yeah. interview that you're kind of sharing with your clients pretty much nailed most of it um <laughs> I think, didn't leave the, the, leave the, the there, the, but anyway <laughs> i think the big one especially because most of my clients are, are younger females and some of them are you know mums and things like that is that carving out that space um yeah. especially and not to play the gender card but especially as a female i think we're, we're we're the nurturers we're the ones that are constantly doing things for other people and we forget to put that space aside for ourselves or we feel guilty around it yeah um you know, or I could be doing this, but I'm doing something for myself. And I think that has been a big thing for a lot of my clients is realizing that actually, no, you're deserving of this space. And it, it actually makes you a better partner or a better friend or a bit because you're happy and you've done what you need to do for you. Um, that's been a really big one for a lot of my clients. And then I think also just things like just 
just the ba- like you say the basics but eating <laughs> like remembering to eat for some people um yeah you know drinking water instead of coke three times a day things like that just the the really simple things that they can make a really really big impact yeah um and then in the training side of things i think um it's very easy to get caught up in what you see the latest you know social media person doing or you know and these are perfectly curated for instagram they're not the workouts that these people actually do to have that body yeah. i'm sorry no one gets glutes this size from using booty bands like it just doesn't work like that um so yes. um i think sort of breaking down that idea of what's cool and what's trendy and what actually works yeah. um and it's not always glamorous um what works but sometimes just breaking it back down to the simple things, especially in training um, and not sort of going overboard. Um, yeah. Really important. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about what happened to you in leg training? <laughs> got smashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> when I first came to Amy, I wasn't a fan of training legs. I'm very much a bro split type person. I like chest, I love shoulders, I love arms which unfortunately aren't what they're necessarily looking for in bikini, maybe shoulders. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but they're not looking for big biceps, unfortunately. <laughs> so I had to learn to like legs and it may have taken me a little while because Amy is very, very good at training legs. <laughs> so there was a few days where I couldn't walk very well, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, well, but I think it comes back to that challenge thing of that limitation and that you put on yourself of, oh, well, I'm not good at that or I'm not, you know, or naturally i'm a lot i find it a lot easier to train up a body so that's what i gravitate towards right yeah. we all like what yeah. we find easy um so for me it was really good to realize that actually it's not that you hate it it's just that you haven't been doing it you it's not your best or your strongest feature at the moment so you decided you didn't like it because it's hard <laughs> um and then being challenged and thinking thinking what I thought was hard was, was not hard. Um, what Amy thinks is hard is hard. <laughs> um, but being pushed past that limit and going, oh, wow, I actually did that. And, okay, maybe you're actually limiting yourself in what you're capable of doing. Um, so which has transferred to my own training, um, even when I'm just training alone. Like, I'll sit there and go, now nah, come on, you can put more on. Or you can try for another rep. Or you can, whereas before I would have gone, oh, no, that's heavy and you did it, so you're done. Yeah. Um, I think... Yeah. It was really, really good for my training to realise that legs are actually really fun. Um, yeah, so you done, didn't think. train legs. <laughs> you used to have anxiety before a leg session with me. Oh, yeah. I, there's been a couple of times I had tears in the car before I, I rocked up to a session with you because I was just that nervous. <laughs> but did it, did that doesn't anyway. happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did it anyway. And then suddenly loved legs, got to nearly a 100 kilo squat. And... We've loved the squat. <laughs> And it was funny as well, right? Like now that you look back at those leg sessions, they were very light legs <laughs> as well, right? Like they were, yeah. you know, you would like look at them now and go, that was a warm up. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you, you, always train, can get worse. You, train, you train legs willingly now on your own. Yeah. <laughs> several times a week, right? Yes. Yeah. And the glutes, which is the, the glutes are the new legs. Oh, glutes <laughs> are will learn. Glute, glute, yeah. I, I still don't like glute training and I have to do it. I, <laughs> Look, glutes is really just a pain in the ass. That's all it is. Yeah, glute training, literally. Is a pain in the ass. That's it. That's all it's good I for. Love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. And then, you know, again, this isn't about the Amy show. Um, so, this is in general terms. But what do you think are the benefits of having a coach and why should someone engage one? Absolutely. Um, look, before I had a coach, or before I did my PT, I probably didn't appreciate the benefits of them so much i'd never actually had a pt before amy so amy's my first one um bar's pretty low i <laughs> hardly um, <laughs> but but um which i think that a lot of people found interesting that i went into pt when i'd never actually had the experience of having a pt yeah. but yeah. again yeah. have to be in control of everything so um for me after going from training by myself with no knowledge to training by myself with some knowledge from PT um, to training with a coach. It's just chalk and cheese. Like you can't compare the two. So there's, I mean, there's heaps of benefits, but for me, the biggest things, accountability. So 
knowing that there's someone who's going to say, well, and not in a um, like a punishment type way, but someone who's going to actually call me out and say, well, this is your goal. You said you want to get to here, but you're doing the opposite. Why? And actually making me stop and think about why I was doing the things I was doing. Um, a lot of it like self-sabotaging behavior as well. Um, obviously someone that can push me at like in my training. Um, I didn't actually realize what I was capable of um, until I started training with you, um, being pushed past my limits and then some. So that was, that's actually really cool because I went from being really nervous and scared about sessions with you to being really excited because I knew that, you know, we're going to push past something or, you know, I might get a new PB or even if it's not a new, you know, a PB, it's like, oh, I know I'm going to do a really good session today because there's no way I can sort of get out of it in the back of my head, which is really good. Um, and then I think also the biggest one is um, maybe not at the start, but now that I know a bit more is taking the stress out of and the decisions out of a lot of things. So um, a lot of people have said to me, oh, well, you're a PT. Why don't you coach yourself? Or, you know, once you've done it for a few years and I'm like, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> um, there's a lot of decisions to be made in a bodybuilding. It's like, Especially when you're depleted. Prep. You can't yeah. see clearly, right? You need an extra exactly. set of arms. Yeah. Exactly right. So when you're very lean, you don't think you're very lean. Um, and then I think also just those things of second-guessing yourself or when programming going, oh, well, I don't really like that exercise, so I could do this because technically it really trains the same thing. And, yeah, no, it just cuts out all that. Um takes the fatigue out of it, takes the decision-making out of it. And for me, I think that is – that just creates a lot less stress in my life. Um, yeah. Constantly thinking about those things. Like I remember when I was tracking my own food, or not on sort of a meal plan or anything like that, um, and trying to track macros and calories and this and that and not really knowing what I was trying to aim for and um, – not having a longer term plan as well, just having the, oh, okay, so we just do this today and we do this today. I think having someone who can see where you where you want to be, where you are, and then can give you those stepping stones to get there um, is really, really, really helpful. Um, otherwise you get ones because fitness isn't this linear path, right? Like you don't just go from here to here. It's sort of up yeah, and down. Exactly. And when you have those downs, um, it can be really easy to sort of get caught up and go, oh, I'm doing everything wrong, throw everything out, start again, um, especially when you're as type A as I am. Um, sit there and go, oh, well, I'm obviously doing something wrong. Um, so this needs to change, that needs to change. Having someone to do the thinking for me <laughs> makes my life a lot easier. It also means I can put that energy into things that are more important. So um, like my clients, I can think for them. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, relationship my dogs like being able to take my dogs for a walk and not be going okay so for breakfast i'm going to have this and then for you know just being able to have that little bit of mental presence it's, yeah it's really yeah yeah and so what so there's, you've mentioned before as well that you see there's a difference between a pt and a coach so what's the difference for you all right for me uh, a pt is someone who and this isn't to have a got pts i'm a pt um is someone who will take you through a training session um push you um might be helping you towards your goals give you a little bit of nutrition advice maybe but to me a coach is a bit more well-rounded so um for me a coach is not just about training not just about food although those are important um they're about mindset goals seeing you as a whole person um and meeting you where you're at so we've had discussions about this before but you know some days you're just not going to be in the zone to hit, you know, the squat that you were doing a week ago because you've, someone's had a car crash, you've, you know, had a terrible day at work, you've been kept late, you didn't get a good sleep last night, you haven't got your meals in and you're just not in the headspace to do it. And um, so having that sort of understanding of where someone's at and, okay, we need to modify um, and then the accountability as well throughout the week. So not just... I see you for half an hour and then I'll see you again this time next week. Mm. Um, I think it's really that whole person sort of thing. So, I mean, there's there's so many facets to it, but yeah. To yeah. really yeah. that, it's almost like having a life coach, right? So someone who when, think, when she hits the fan, it's like, who do I speak? Okay, Amy, <laughs> you know, um, 
they but also having someone in, but they're still removed from yeah you know they're, 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 yeah yeah although we're friends <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. in the end there's a line between where you coach me and where that is so yeah. it's like yeah. okay when it comes down to business you're going to give me the right advice for me um and i can trust you on that and i can trust that you're going to lead me the way i need to go i'm still making the decisions for myself but um yeah. you're going to lead me to the get me to my goal best yeah yeah and I think and the other obviously well, with competing is a whole <laughs> Yeah, and, and I well. think you've done this as well, right? You've applied this where you've tapped into, you know, as a PT, even so, like you might be PT, but you've had a lot of time dealing with other people and you've been a carer, right? So, you know, as soon as someone walks in the gym, yeah. you can just see by their demeanour what type of day they've had and whether or not what type of training session you're going to do because you're going to have a plan in your head. Of where and what you want to achieve in that PT yeah. session. That's why I look at them. <laughs> yes. And you're like, we're doing something else today. And you can still progress people. Like, yeah. you know, for example, the example that you've had where it's like, you're not going to hit a, a heavy squat today. It'd be dangerous for everyone involved, right? Because you're not yeah. in the space for it. Yeah. But exactly. Then I just make you do like an uploading on a, on a leg press or something like that. And it sorts you out mentally. <laughs> And still gets, you know, still gets damaged. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's always multiple parts. Yeah, the same, exactly right. The same goal, right? So it's about what do we need to get done? But, but yeah. yeah, exactly as you said, like meeting you where where you're at to say, okay, well, hang on a minute. The, the goal is here, but it's also to look after this person. Yeah. I could smash them anyway, but then, you know, they're going to be yeah. a kind of mess in the car park and they won't have resolved any of that. Or we can look at what's going to get the best yeah. results from where they're at the moment, right? And I think that's that's the piece that's – and that, and that yeah. comes again, you know, like when you're looking at someone from bodybuilding prep, you can't – the reverse diet needs to be the part that you work backwards from. Everyone works backwards from stage day. I always think about what time do you need past yeah. prep, you know, because there's a period of time that becomes a bit dark in a – and a bit um and a bit hairy but the thing is as well you're a person you're not just a bodybuilder and you're not just somebody who's doing a prep right so um yeah i think that becomes yeah, really cool. exactly um okay and so all right so how do people get in contact with you Michelle? because obviously you've got a very inspiring story there's a lot of people who obviously connect with that as you said your niche tends to be young women particularly young women with kids who are you know are, are used to being that um you know, primary caregiver and uh, and uh, being there for everyone else. Um, so what's the best way for them to get in contact with you if they, they want to get some training or some, um, you know, programming done? Absolutely. So you can find me, um, Instagram is probably the easiest way to find me, underscore just underscore Rocky. Um, otherwise, Facebook, Rochelle Fair. I'm still in the process of setting up a website. So we'll get there eventually. Um, or... If you pop into Vigor Gym, um, I'll be around or they'll be able to put me in contact with you as well. So, yeah, a few different ways. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's hard, It's, um, uh, but, you know, you've got such a, a, a powerful story that it's it's hard not to share. Um, and, and then so what are your future goals? Are you going to take some time for off-season and then um, come back um and potentially maybe a new division as well, depending on how well that off season goes. So, are you going to keep that? Yeah, we go. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm probably going to take a decent off season this year, just for some space to get the rest of my life sorted out. Because we've been so hardcore on bodybuilding. Not to say I'm not going to be training, um, but probably 18 months, maybe two years off season, and then. Hopefully we can build enough size um, and shape that potentially want to go into figure eventually. So following the footsteps of Amy, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see how we come up. <laughs> yeah. If not, um, we'll just keep working towards it until we get there. But yeah, that's the plan, the long-term plan. So yeah. very so excited. You're a bodybuilder for life um, and you're chasing that elusive hundred kilo squat this off season, at least we'll probably exceed that to be honest. Yes. But, um, and enjoying yeah, everything as it is. And I think that's really important as well, right? A lot of people try and do bodybuilding when their life isn't in order. Not to say that yours is a mess, but you've got a lot going on. Um, but um, it's really important yeah. <laughs> to set yourself up to be able to create the space for bodybuilding as well, because it is time consuming. It's resource intensive on a number of fronts. Um, so, yeah, so you're yeah. now taking that time to set yourself up so that you can dedicate that time when you want to um, and also... Okay also take some time to actually watch it a bit more as well right so potentially supporting 
Yes, and the other yes. people's bodybuilding aspirations and seeing what goes in behind the scenes and learning more. Definitely. So that's really exciting. So yeah. I'm looking forward to sort of being on the other end as well and um, learning a lot more about the process while not being in it and being able to actually think straight because I've got calories in me. So that'll yeah. be exciting. It's so much <laughs> more fun watching someone else do a prep while you're just eating your food. It's yeah. like, it's actually farming, <laughs> right? Because they're so busy, like running around doing everything, and you're just sitting there, just enjoying your snacks, and you're like, "This is great, love it, <laughs> love bodybuilding." <laughs> yeah, yeah I this is a sport it. for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is, though, when they look absolutely exactly on stage, you're like, then you're really inspired, and you're like, "Oh, I want to get up there," and you can't wait to get up there, and you're like, "Damn, it's still going to take me at least sixteen weeks." <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I go to a show, I'm like, oh, do I want to prep? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like, all right, like, let's oh, go. Maybe not yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. All right, well, I want to oh, thank you dear. for taking the time. Um, it was lovely chatting with you. Um, inspiring story as well. I'm sure that will probably bring you on at some point when you're smashing it next. Oh, and hang on, we didn't talk about, so what happened in that <laughs> show? You actually did really well. So oh, can I share with the audience? Yeah. For sure. So um, I was really, really happy. So went in this year without many expectations and Bikini Tall, I got a no, third in Bikini Tall, which was very exciting for me. And then yeah, um, a second in Fit Model. So yeah, Awesome. And then in Bikini Tall, I don't, how, how many competitors were you up against? Fair few. I think there was about five or six. So yeah. there might have been more. Might have been more. Yeah, might have been more. Not sure exactly, but yeah. But but I was happy. Yeah, <laughs> I was very funny. happy to place and very, very happy with my feedback. So yeah. That's that was good for me as well to sort of be like not even worried about it and then place was really, really exciting. So it means we're working towards the right well, we're going in the right direction, which is yeah, exciting. Yeah. Yeah, the feedback was pretty good. So, and that's the thing as well. So what were the big wins, you know, in comparison to the, you know, the first win, obviously, um, when you got up on stage was just to finally do that. And then, you know, the yeah. second one's a bit harder, right? Because you can kind of get a little bit of complacency and then other things, you know, become in. And then you also have a bit more of a realistic expectation that things are going to take longer um, to, you know, sort of lock into place. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So what do you think, you know, were the biggest changes that you were the most proud of from, from different comps? I think for me, um, staying consistent through the second one was um, like with my training, I think through the first prep, it was sort of go, not going through the motions, but just trying to get it done. Um, there's It's so much going on at once and everything's so new that you're just trying to make it work um, and go, oh, how do I fit this in? Okay. And it became almost like a checklist. Like my training definitely didn't stay as intense as it would have this year um, just from improvements in form and skill and things like that and also an expectation of I knew what was coming this year so I knew I was going to be tired and it'd be done anyway um uh the I think the second one isn't necessarily as exciting because it's not all new and sparkly and oh what is going to happen next and oh is there going to be a change and oh it's new posing and oh but for me it was actually quite nice to go in and have a few like have an idea of what was going to happen and how it was going to happen. It's never going to be set in stone, but it was less less full on in the sense of I was a bit calmer about things because I knew, oh, this is normal to feel this way or, oh, you're hungry. Okay, that's how it is. So, you know, um, I think, though, there's a caveat to that in that, that complacency where it can be harder. Not motivation is not the right word, but, when you've done it all, it's kind of like, Diligent. I know what's coming. Yeah. yeah. And I'll do my things, but am I actually focused when I'm doing them? Am I actually doing them with intent or am I just doing them? Cause I know it needs to be done. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sort of, I had a position sort of towards the end of that prep where I think we had a conversation as well, but um, it sort of made me realize, Oh yeah. Okay. You still need to be in that mindset <laughs> while you're going through this don't just follow the motions you need to get back into it and have that hunger again yeah. um and really look at why you're doing it like if you're just going through it, why are you doing it 
<laughs> um, you know, you can go and train and diet without getting on stage. So for me, it made me sit back and reflect and actually realize what it is I love about the sport and what what I want to achieve, and then um, sort of reframe my goals and my not my expectations because after the first show, I I knew I had more realistic expectations, but then to be more excited about the future, not yeah. just oh, I just want to get this show done and I'm so excited for the show. It's like, yeah, the show's great, but that's not that's not the end point. Yeah. Um, so I think also knowing I, I want to progress into figure, it was a bit of a mindset place for me, like weird place for me because I was like, well, I don't really care if I come first in bikini because that's not what I want. Yeah. Um, which is a weird place to be when you're, putting so much into competing something that you don't necessarily want, but there's a process to getting to where I want to, and that's part of the process. Um, and I actually had a wonderful time. Like it was such a good day. Yeah, um, you got to have more cool, like, like, feeling about it. Enjoying yeah. the show, right? Like you just enjoyed and the it, whole experience. For the and it time. taught me that lesson of not like really solidified that lesson of who cares what the outcome is. If it's great, it's great. If it's not what you expected, that's great too. Like enjoy it for what it is, not for what the outcome is. Yeah. So it was a good reframing for me in that sense, but it's also made me very clear on where I want to go next. Yeah. So it's yeah. been good. Yeah. And, and what about yeah. like, you know, so, um, changes in your physique? Exciting. Like, <laughs> so there was some noticeable changes in your physique. Like obviously oh, there was, yeah, massive, massive. You, know, you got in the shape, <laughs> you got in the shape of your life for your first comp and then you went to another level entirely, you know, for the second one. So what were some of the changes that you noticed? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So definitely put some size on my legs. I've definitely well, I've got legs, um, which was really exciting after some of those grueling sessions. It was pretty nice to see the results. Um, I think with bodybuilding as well in off season, people don't realise you don't walk around looking shredded all the time. So while you're still putting the work in, you don't always know what the result is underneath. So it takes a long time before you get to see that. So it's nice to sort of strip back and go, oh, okay, all that work has paid off. I've I've had improvements um, going in this year as well, understanding that it takes a long time to build muscle, especially as a female. And going back yeah. to that idea of you're not going to get bulky because I've yeah. been trying <laughs> for years. <laughs> it still hasn't happened. Um, yeah, me, me too. <laughs> if anyone knows how to do that, tell me. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but I think, yeah, um, being able to look at a couple of stage shots next to each other has been really cool. So definitely grown some shoulders. We've grown some, grown some quad, um, done some work on the glutes. Like not to say I don't have work to do, but I can definitely see the improvements. We've got some size, we've got some shape, which is, so my shape's definitely changed. Um, it's becoming more of that sort of X frame that we're looking for um, in the bodybuilding scene, which is really cool to sort of see it sort of the progression over time and it can be really um it can be a hard sport sometimes in the sense that you're like oh i'm doing all this work and i can't see the results or i know they're coming but i don't see them and then when you do do all that work and you finally come up and you see that you're like oh okay yeah awesome like we're <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> yeah yeah and that's it's it. a hard that feeling comes... to describe. <laughs> yeah, and that's it, right? Like, and when you start to treat the comps as more of a milestone for personal achievement, yeah. it becomes a lot more rewarding, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot more fun. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, there you go, guys. That was uh, a real deep dive, a raw deep dive into bodybuilding, but also, you know, a weight loss journey. And, um, you know, I want to thank you, Rochelle, for, for being so um vulnerable and open around sharing your journey because uh, you know some of the stuff you talked about it's not easy um and everyone has their own journey and stuff so you know that that raw honesty and stuff like that I think is is really important because um perhaps it's a it's an overlooked side of the sport everybody always looks at the the pretty costumes and the tan and you know the pancakes that everyone's making because apparently that fits into your macros and all that <laughs> yes right but bodybuilding actually <laughs> is, is a lot different so yeah, thank you for sharing your insights. Um, yeah, also, Rochelle is a great PT, guys. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for one that's less scary and won't have you crying in the car park for a leg session, <laughs> Rochelle, um, of course, <laughs> if you are looking yes. for someone who's going to beat you up in the gym, then I'm also available as well. But, you know, anyway. 
Like that right now, the story. <laughs> Just kidding. It has a good um, job of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, no, we don't try with me. They're just getting really mean all the time. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> She's really not. <laughs> That's all right. It's too late now. It's out there. It's fine. Um, Only sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again for your time. Um, all the best uh, to you. You do amazing. Um, well, you're not going anywhere. I'm still going to haunt you now. You're stuck in my. <laughs> you're you're a lifer so you know that's that's gonna happen um but yeah no um, (laughs) really appreciate the insights your support um love watching your journey um i know you're gonna do well and the thing is as well that's been so rewarding is 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 seeing you grow as a person and not just a bodybuilder right like it's knowing that you're contributing and, and influencing other people um you know your leadership shadow is amazing um you really bring a different element to the sport so um, I think it's important as well because when we've got PTs out there that have got that kind of level of consciousness and that care about their the clients, I think that's really important. So keep doing what you're doing and um, I'm sure that we'll see more of you um, and uh, your fabulous sock collection as well. Uh, <laughs> anyone that hasn't seen Rochelle has the most amazing collection of very colourful socks um, that she she wears to training. Um, so, so, yeah, you'll have to come down to Vega and see yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of AKA Fitness Connect. Really keen to see what your three key takeaways were from the podcast. So feel free to comment below, comment on the socials, connect with me on socials, or visit us at our Linktree site, AKA Fitness. Thank you.